Hi guys, EBP Man here, and today we're going to do an unboxing, review, and setup of the Orbi, and this is the Netgear Mesh Wi-Fi system. Let's check it out. So this week we reviewed uh, the Google Wi-Fi solution, and this is the Netgear's version of the uh, mesh um, wireless networking solutions that are now becoming more and more prevalent on the market. Uh, this one, uh, from a model perspective, is the AC3000, and this is a two-kit. Now, the reason why I, I looked at this unit is because you could get one single um, unit, which would be your router, but it's not going to cover the same amount of distance as two. So these two combined are going to give you uh, 4,000 uh, square feet of coverage. Unlike the Google Wi-Fi, which will give you 4,500, but requires three of these units in order to accomplish that. So you need more units uh, to get uh, higher coverage, but you're only looking at a 500 square foot difference um, with having that extra puck versus the two solutions that you see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the specs. We're going to uh, do the unboxing, we'll do the setup, and we'll see how they compare. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with mesh networking, uh, this is a really good graphic or visual that helps you understand what mesh networking is all about. Traditionally, if we were to not look at this area right here, your wireless uh, router is going to be somewhere where your internet comes in. In some cases, it could be in the basement. In some cases, it can be in the living room. Uh, if you're in a small studio, it could be in your studio. But as you go further and further away from your wireless uh, access point or router, what ends up happening is is it has to go through walls and the walls could be not just on drywall but could actually be cement and the Wi-Fi signal continues to degrade so by the time you're on this side of the house you're not getting any Wi-Fi signal so mesh networks are about having one that's physically connected hardwired to the internet connection and a second one that all you're doing is powering it up so it is plugged into the wall that's the only power source you don't have to run Ethernet cable you don't have to have any other cabling besides that you don't need to get one of those kits that turns your electrical um, outlets into a network it's simply a plug what then happens is that these two devices communicate with each other and help each other create the coverage so this is your main connected to your internet and then this is the one that's going to allow it to piggyback off of this now we've also reviewed on the channel here some what are called uh, wireless extenders or Wi-Fi extenders uh, and the difference between this solution and Wi-Fi extenders is that a Wi-Fi extender while it has a similar technology uh, it tends to reduce your Wi-Fi uh, speeds by half uh, we've seen some exceptions to that but for the most part that's what you see so with this solution what you're gonna do is get better Wi-Fi you're gonna have your entire home covered it is going to give you um, high uh, performance um, and then also it's just as simple as plugging it in. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Now for those of you who are interested maybe in the technical specifications, let's look at some of the specs right here. Uh, so you're looking at a AC3100 um, and it has the capability of 1733, 866 and 400 megabits. It's a tri-band solution, hence what you see happening up here, supporting um, the standards that you would expect, both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. It does have onboard memory, uh, which is great because that means that it's going to be able to support a lot of multimedia, a lot of the things that's um, being pulled out of your home as you're watching Netflix. You have six high-performing antennas. Um, you'll notice again some additional um, enhancing that's taking place for the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, MIMO capabilities and then uh, it comes with four ports uh, and this is a big difference the Google Wi-Fi solution only has one so this is going to give you the ability to connect multiple connections and it is a gigabit uh, type solution and um, also it has one USB uh, 2.0 um, over here um, again everything that's included in the box which we'll see in a couple seconds and there's really nothing else of specifications to look at now as soon as you open up the box and the box is rather large you can see that it's even a hard time uh, me having it in camera uh, you have one of your units here and we'll move this over to the side and then what you have is your second unit over there so both of them are stacked one on top of the other now over here what we'll find is another box of goodies and we'll go ahead and open this one up to see what's inside We'll see what we have here. Here you have a quick start guide, uh, Ethernet cable. So with this side here, these are your power bricks, and boy are they big! They almost remind me to uh, Max power bricks. So we got two of those, and it looks like uh, that's it. So very simple. Um, you have your two 
um, your router and then your satellite and your power as well as one Ethernet cable. Now these units are, are rather large. Uh, the actual Google Wi-Fi one is about this tall and it's about you know this big. Uh, so this is uh, much larger and if we stand it up you can see how tall this is. So um, it's almost uh, my full hand in length. Right? So it's um, pretty tall. But again you only need two of these to have almost the same coverage that you get with three of the Google. So uh, I'm sure the height has something to do with the antennas and the amount of coverage that you're going to get. You will notice that one of them is labeled satellite. right? And you'll notice that um, if we look at the back right here, uh, you don't really have a lot going on here. So you do have, even though it's a satellite, uh, the neat thing is that you can connect four devices physically to this. So you may be asking yourself, well, why would I have a satellite unit with four Ethernet connections? Well, um, you could actually connect this in an office and then have four devices physically connected to this, or you could even connect this to a gigabit router, one, and then use this to share a physical connection. So that's, um, that's an option. You notice that you have USB 2.0, you have your power, you have your reset, and then you have this button, which is for syncing. So this is the satellite. So if you were not to use all those Ethernet ports, and you're just using this in your home, what is involved? Well, simply, all you have to do is use this plug right here. You don't have to worry about anything else except this one. So uh, that's really nice and flexible. Now, on the bottom of each unit, what you're going to find is the Wi-Fi the, the wi address, the MAC, as well as the password that you'll need in order to access it. So uh, this has a browser-based interface uh, that you can use and navigate, and it's actually a very robust browser interface. So as you're looking at this video and you're wondering, you know, which one should you choose? Well, I'm going to have a comparison video coming be, uh, very shortly. Uh, the one thing I'll tell you right off the bat is if you're looking for a router, uh, a mesh wireless solution to give you expanded coverage, but has a lot of the advanced router capabilities, VPN, being able to manage your IP range, a lot of those features, then you're going to want something like this. Uh, so this is a little bit more robust when it comes to capabilities. The Google Wi-Fi, in my opinion, is for someone who all they want to do is plug it in and, and extend their Wi-Fi throughout their house. They don't care about what IP address they have. Um, they don't care about a lot of the features. They just want Internet, and it's simple, and they're really not doing anything else except connecting to the Internet. So now this piece uh, you're not going to see on camera because I'm going to go down to my router. My router is actually two levels um, where I am right now and uh, I'm going to connect it. You're going to see some effects where the router is going to pulse and change colors and then immediately after that I'm going to place my satellite. What I'll do is I'll place the satellite here so that you can see the satellite starting up but we'll go ahead and do this process now. So the first uh, Orby uh, unit is already connected and it's flashing white and what you're going to see is up here there's like a little glowing ring that comes up. It's not really um, strong but it's still there and now the next point is to um, power it up. So you'll notice that as soon as I plug it in it, it has power. It's not enabled yet so we're going to go ahead We well, actually it was. So it's lit and we're going to do is just let it go through its process to set up. So it'll probably take a couple seconds to start up, and then we should see um, some colors taking place. And there you go. So now we're starting to see uh, white, and there should be some type of synchronization process that takes place. So we'll let it continue. All right, as it's going through the process, it went from magenta uh, to now blue, and it's going to continue to cycle through a couple colors. Um, and all it's doing is just connecting and setting itself up. So now based on the location of the um, satellite, what you're going to find is you'll get a couple of colors. And you just notice that mine went blue. So it cycled through a couple of them. So it was first um, this kind of amber color. Um, then it went through the magenta. And then it ended up in blue. And then it stopped. And basically each one of these has to do with the quality of the connection and the setup process. So if you're in a uh, blue solid state, then you know, you're great. If it's magenta, it's not good. And then if it's amber, um, you want to consider moving it around, which is really good because then it's going to give you kind of a sense of um, how you're doing when it comes to the connectivity. Now, with Google Wi-Fi, you use the app to do that. In this situ situation, the actual router itself changes colors and gives you that feedback, which is really cool. Now, on this side of the video, what we're going to do is uh, go through the um, setup process that you have to go through once you connect through uh, the Orbi uh, website. So literally, what you do is once you connect your PC or laptop or Mac to the Orbi, you'll go to orbilogin.com. So that's O-R-B-I-L-O-G-I-N.com. And then you're going to come and get presented with this at the very first time setup. 
Now, keep in mind that you do have the uh, password to your um, access point or the, the Orbi station is on a label in the uh, on the one that says router. So all you have to do is look for that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And right now it's checking the internet connection. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to hit next. Now it's it detected I have another router because I have multiple routers on this and I'm actually going through one of my routers, uh, which is fine. You may not get that message. Successfully connected. And we're going to hit next. So it's going to check everything for us. And remember, we went through this process earlier uh, as we were doing the initial setup. So uh, we know everything is great. So all we're going to do is just let the system go through its process since this is the first time that we log into the web interface. All right, so let's go ahead and hit uh, set up. And we'll let it go through the configuration process. It looks like that was pretty fast. So now what I need to do is just establish what my admin uh, credentials are going to be and what my secret questions are. The next step in the process is establishing what your SSID name is. And this is what your system is known as in the network and the password. Now you can use, you can leave it as a standard name and password that was on the, on the uh, router itself, but I always advise you change it. So I'm going to change mine, uh, both the user ID and or the na network name and the password. Now, once uh, I did the setup, uh, and you find this is pretty uh, standard with most uh, new devices, you'll notice that it's going through a firmware update. So the router and the satellite piece, and you know here's the information, are now going through some updates. So I'm going to go ahead and update them all. And once I've updated them, I'll continue the recording. Now, once you're going through the process, uh, one final step is you do have the ability to establish an account with uh, Netgear. I chose to skip that part. Um, and now I'm going to just go ahead and do my login. Now, once the update's complete um, and you get to the screen, a couple of things that you're going to see. You're going to see in this area here uh, the internet and its status, your wireless information, both your SSID as well as your password, the number of devices that you have and satellite devices, parental controls if they're enabled, guest mode if they're enabled. And uh, this is pretty familiar for those of you who have used network gear in the past. Um, it really hasn't changed much. So you have a basic and advanced area. Um, here um, you can see information about your network. Um, you can also uh, see that you have some really good full capabilities uh, where you're able to really take advantage of um, configuring um, dynamic IP or static IPs, things that are really not available um, on Google Home. Uh, we'll go through the next section just so we can see some of the features that are here. Uh, again, wireless, uh, you're able to define your network name um, and the pass key. Uh, and in this case, you have, um, looks like one a name for both as well. So you notice that you have one SSID, uh, but you have your 2.4 and your 5 gigahertz channel uh, both combined, it looks like. Uh, we'll go into attached devices now. And this is going to give you kind of visibility to which devices are uh, connected uh, to, the, uh, to the routers or the satellite. Um, and it'll do that by name, MAC address. Um, and it's also going to give you the ability to um, work with access control. So you can uh, either block a device or uh, permit a device. Uh, you do have parental controls. Um, and you can set those up. Um, the parental controls, uh, we'll go ahead and continue. You do have a guest network settings. So here we have our guest network settings. So you can enable to broadcast an SID if that's something you'd like. You can add an additional Orbi satellite. So if you wanted to do that, and then uh, we'll go into this area here, which is advanced. Um, there's a setup wizard. Um, and here you can see router information, versioning information. You do have on this area here, Mac information well with IP and subdomain. Um, you have your SSIDs, and you'll notice that they have the same name. Um, this is not a screen that doesn't look like you can edit. Let me see if I can get into that area. Now, they're, they're both going to be the same name. 
So um, you're not going to be able to do anything there. Let's go back into that area. So um, that's one thing I guess that it looks like it's changed uh, that you're not going to be able to modify um, those settings. Let's go back to setup, internet setup again, uh, wireless setup. Okay, or in an AP. So you can see that it's uh, again um, a router or it's going to be an access point. And then uh, in any kind of port forwarding, dynamic DNS, VPN service, static routes, remote management. Again, what you would expect from a full functioning router, much, much more robust than what you would find uh, from Google Wi-Fi at this point. All right, so now what we're going to do is a speed test. Um, just to be clear about the configuration, I have the Orbi router uh, connected directly to my internet service provider, which happens to be Comcast. And I do have the mesh network uh, working. Uh, everything is up. So let's go ahead and do a speed test and see how it performs. Now this is pretty slow. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm doing it off of my router in a second. Now this isn't bad. Now that was 67.53 download. And now here goes the upload. Now here's the issue so far I have with this. Um, my router speed should be well over 150. Uh, so that was the speed test. Let's go ahead and look at what it looks like now under my normal router, not the Orbi. Now this is connected uh, to a Netgear router. So let's go ahead and hit begin test. See if there's any difference. But again, this is a Netgear that's a non-mesh router. And it's a little bit better. Um, I should have speeds around 150, so some wonky stuff may be going on with my ISP. That being said, uh, there's not a lot of difference then between the Orbi router and this router when it comes to the speed. So we saw 70 a couple uh, seconds ago, and here we're seeing in the 80. So it's actually performing well. All right, there you have it. So what are my thoughts about uh, this router now that I fully tested it and I've been running it in my home? Um, I think it's a very capable router. It's uh, one of the most fully uh, functional mesh routers that I found on the market. A uh, couple things to point out. Again, the fact that you have all of these ports uh, that you don't have in other routers like the uh, Google Wi-Fi. The fact that the software itself has all of the capabilities of a standard router and you could see that um, in the video. It, also the fact that you only need two, two instead of three or four um, to have some very wide coverage and um, even though I was having some internet problems myself and my speed was a little bit lower than normal when you saw me compare it between a standard router and a uh, and the Orbi system uh, it competed pretty well. We didn't see that significant of a drop. So if you're looking for a solution that is going to give you wider coverage and you want something that's going to be um, relatively compact even though this is uh, pretty tall uh, this is not a bad option for those of you who need to have wider coverage. So if you have any comments about this video, leave it in the comment area below. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe, click on that video if you're interested, and as always, thanks for watching.